Welcome to the fourth lecture of the Collecting Sensor Data series. If you follow along this video, you should be able to capture air temperature, air humidity, soil humidity, and environmental light data from the sensor. To achieve this, we need to tell the sensor board in our code which sensor is connected to which input pin of the microcontroller of the sensor board. The pins are shown on the image on the right. Each of the lines initializes a variable of the integer type, which is a whole number. The keyword const is used to make it a read-only variable. The ver value of these variables can't be changed runtime. The value after the equal sign refers to the pin on the hydro sensor board, to which each of the individual sensors is connected. These lines should go on top of the program, just below the lines that include the libraries, which we've done in the previous video. To read out the values of the air temperature and air humidity, we will create two separate functions. These look very simple, but it is good practice to have a function that has only one job. First, we need to define the type of the sensor, in this case the DHT11. The library we included supports other sensors as well. The second step is to initialize the sensor. Now we are ready to create our functions. Each function has the same elements. First a type, followed by a name and lastly brackets to pass additional parameters if desired. The values from both the humidity and air temperature are of type float, so we need to create a function that returns floats. Luckily for us, the library handles the complicated stuff, so inside our own function, we only need to make a call to the function read temperature and read humidity that are in the library. By passing the argument false, the result will be returned in degrees Celsius. The next sensor that we are going to read out is the environmental light sensor, more specific, the BH1750. To read out this sensor, we will also rely on the library. The first line creates an instance of the BH1750 object. The value between the brackets represents an I squared C address. I squared C is a two wired communication protocol which I'm not going to explain in depth here. If you'd like, you can find more information online. As you can see, this function resembles that of the temperature and humidity. With the program we have written now, we can read out data from three different sensors. Before we continue coding, it's wise to test whether we succeeded in collecting the data. So, let's see what we need to add to our program to run some tests. The first thing we need to do is make some adjustments to the predefined function setup. I always like to put the call to the serial.begin function on top inside the setup function. This function call will start serial communication between the connected embedded device and the computer. The value of the parameter between the brackets represents the baud rate, in other words, how fast communication is going. There are a number of fixed values that can be chosen. Although 9600 is relatively slow, it's fast enough and is less pr uh, error prone than faster values. The next line in this function tells the microcontroller that a certain pin should be treated as an output pin. Setting pins can be done by calling the pin mode function, which is part of the Arduino library. Inside the brackets, two parameters are expected. The first one should be an integer value, and the second one either input or output, depending on whether the pin is being used as input or output. The Hygro sensor board requires pin 4 to be turned on in order for the sensor to work. So, after setting pin 4, power control, as output, 
it needs to be set high. This can be done by calling the function digital right. The standard function requires two parameters. The first, an integer, which refers to the pin, and the second, either low or high. High sends a positive voltage to the corresponding pin. Low brings the pin to ground. Setting the pin high might take a small bit of time. That's why I put in a delay. The value between the brackets is in milliseconds. In this case, the board will do nothing for 100 milliseconds. The final steps in the setup is making calls to the begin methods of each of the libraries used. Note that wire.begin enables I2C communication. The parameters of lightmeter.begin control the behavior of the light sensor. I choose a continuous high res mode for a resolution of approximately 1 lux. Other options can be found in the library. To make testing easy, I will also create a function that prints out values to the serial monitor. Again, a function is created by first declaring the type and secondly giving it a name. I choose to call it print sensor data. Note the type being void, meaning that this function will not return anything. Inside the function, we make several calls to the serial.print function. This built-in function sends data through the USB from the HiGo sensor board to the connected PC. To separate the values, I use the special character backslash T, which prints out the tab. Note the difference between serial.print and serial.println. The last one prints out a new line afterwards, so the next statement will be printed on a new line. All that is left is adding two lines to the loop function and upload the program to the Hygro board. To upload your code to the Hygro sensor board, make sure it is connected to your computer through the cable. When it's connected, go to the arrow in the blue bar below and click on it. Now the code will be uploaded to your sensor board. When this is done, you can click on the plug icon in the same blue bar to open the serial monitor. Here you can see the values you get from the sensors. The final sensor that I'm going to read out is a soil humidity sensor. The initial function is straightforward. It uses the analog read function to get a value from the connected pin. But this is not all. This sensor requires some initial calibration to make sense of the values it produces. One way of doing this is by first printing out the values when the sensor lies on the table. And next, putting the sensor in the water, up to the line, and print out the values again. With some small additions, the print sensor data function from the previous step can be used to print out the required data. Now the minimum and the maximum values for the sensor are known, we have to adjust the get solve function. But first make sure to initialize two variables to store the solve min and solve max values. Both should be of the type int. The second line in the function maps the minimum and maximum values from the collaboration step on a 0 to 100 scale and places the obtained values on this scale. With this function completed, all sensor data can be captured. In the next video, I will show how to send this data to the web server. If you like, there's one additional slide available. This shows a function to read out the salt values of the soil. I'm not going to use the function because it does not always work. But feel free to have a look and implement it in your own code.